Continuation of the reading of Dom Casmurro by Marshal de Assis. Chapter 4. A Most Unpleasant Duty. Judea Dias loved superlatives. It was a means of giving a monumental aspect to his ideas. When he had no ideas, it served to prolong his phrases. He went to fetch the backgammon board, which was in another part of the house. I flattened myself against the wall and watched him walk past in his white starched trousers, which strapped under the shoe his cotton jacket and the pendant gravet. He was uh, one of the last to wear such trousers in Rio de Janeiro, and perhaps in the wood. He wore his trousers short so that they were straightened tight. The black scenting cravat, with the steel spring inside, immobilized his neck. It was the fashion. The simple jacket of printed cotton seemed like a full dress coat of him on him. He was thin, draw, and had a bald spot. He walked off with his unusual slop step, not the dragging slowness of a lazy man, but a calculated, deliberated slowness, a complete savagism. The major promise before the minor, the minor promise before the conclusion. A most unpleasant duty. 5. The Dependence He did not always walk with that slow, stiff step. At times he gave away the excited gestures, was often swift and gay in his movements, as natural in this as in the other style. And he laughed loudly, if needed be. A great hollow laugh, but infectious. To such a degree did cheeks, teeth, eyes, the whole face, the whole person, the whole world seem to laugh in him. In grave situations, most grave, gravissimo. He had been our dependent for many years. My father was still on the old plantation in Itagui, and I had just been born. One day he appeared, representing himself as a homeopathic doctor. He carried a manual in a case of medicines. There happened to be an epidemic of fevers at that time. José Dias cured the overseer and a female slave, but would not accept remuneration. My father proposed that he stayed on at the plantation with a small salary. Judas Dias refused. He said it was his duty to bring help to the detached, but of the poor. Who's keeping you from going anywhere? Go where you like, but live with us. I'll come back in three months. He was back in two weeks. He accepted food and lodging. What they gave him as presents. When my father was elected deputy and came to Rio de Janeiro with his family, he came to and he and had his room at the rear of the state. Once when fever was again raging in Itagui, 
My father asked him to go look after our slaves. José Dias was silent, signed, and finally confessed he was not a doctor. He had taken the title to help spread the doctrines of the new school, and he had not done it without a great deal of study, but his conscience would not permit him to accept any more patients. But you cured the others. Perhaps so, but it wouldn't be more just to give the credit to the remedies prescribed in the books. They performed the cures, yes, they, with God's help. I was a charlatan. Don't deny it. It may be that my motives were the highest. Homeopathic is truth, and to serve truth I lied, but it, it is time to set everything straight. He was not sent away, as, his, as he requested. My father could no longer get along without him. He had the gift of making himself welcome and indispensable. One felt his absence as one did that of a member of the family. When my father died, his grief was enormous. That is what I was told. I do not remember. My mother was very grateful and would not hear of his leaving his room uh, on the state. On the seventh day after the mass, he went to take he went to take leave of her. Stay, José Dias. If it is your wish, Senora. He received a little legacy in another will, a guilt edged security and four words of praise. He copied off the words of praise, had them framed and hung them in his room over his bed. These are the best guilt edged securities. He used it to say with time he acquired a certain authority in the family, was listened to the least. He did not presume, he knew how to give his opinion and yet differ. In short, he was a friend. I won't say the best, but not everything is best in this world. And do not imagine that he had the soul of a toad. His bowing and scrapping were calculated harder than natural. His clothes lasted forever. Unlike those who ruin a new suit at the first time they put it on. He wore the old one brushed and unwrinkled, smooth seamed, bottomed up, with a poor and modest elegance. He had read carelessly, but enough to be amusing of an evening or even or over dessert, or to explain some phenomenon, to speak of the effects of heat and cold of the North or and South Poles and of Robespierre. He often told about a trip he made to Europe, and he confessed that if it had not been for us, he would have returned there long ago. Returned there long ago. <laughs> he had friends in Lisbon, but our family, he said, next below God, was everything. Below or above? asked Uncle Cosmo one day. Below, repeated José Dias reverently. And my mother, who was religious, was glad to see that he placed God in the proper place. She smiled her approval. José Dias thanked her with an inclination of the head. My mother used to give him small sums of money from time to time. <laughs> Uncle Cosme, who was a lawyer, entrusted him with the copying of legal papers. That's it for this week.
next week we continue with our reading. Thank you for listening. Goodbye. Thank you.